Did you know that Oscar Wilde, this statue right here, has him facing at his childhood home here at number one, Marion Square. Now it was in this house where actually Oscar learned his trade of uh, storytelling and writing and so forth. Because his mother was a poet herself and a storyteller and she wrote for a publication called The Nation. She also used to have salons and gatherings right here on this house every Saturday evening and the who's who of Dublin society would attend. Oscar, as a young boy, was allowed to attend these salons as long as he did not speak. Now, his mother was a brilliant conversationalist and also had an amazing wit about her. She was also prone to exaggeration, but she always maintained, never let fact get in the way of a good story. So this was the beginnings and Oscar's mother, Lady Jane Wilde, was the influence on Oscar for his future writings and for his future storytelling. And, uh, that is a fact about Oscar Wilde and his mother. Hi everybody, my name is Rory O'Kane. I'm the founder of Rory's Tours NI.com. And um, I'm basically just going to tell you, first of all, about who inspired me to become a tour guide. So who is the inspiration? Who inspired me to become a tour guide? Who inspired me to showcase this beautiful island of Ireland that we all live on. I live in Belfast, up on the north coast, but I was brought up in the small town of Ballycastle, and my father was my inspiration. My dad was known as James O'Kane. To me, he was Seamus, and to me, he was my inspiration. Why? Because he was involved in tourism uh, throughout Northern Ireland. From 1962, he coined the phrase, the Causeway Coast. And every day as a young boy, we went back and forth along the Causeway Coast and it took him 25 years to actually have a centre built at the Causeway. So he's my hero, he's my inspiration and he's a part of a lot of the stories that you'll enjoy when you come on tour with me. Interest in uh, heritage really stems from my own family heritage and these diaries are an amazing account of my family's history from 1959 to 2003. So a very happy Heritage Week from Dublin School Tours. So I was looking for this one here. This is um, this is my grandfather's diary from 1966. Uh, so if you actually go through it, we have, if you go to March 1966, we have there Nelson's pillar blown up on the 8th of March, which was a Tuesday. So like I was here, we have uh, 1972, uh, famous date at the very start of that year, which was uh, Bloody Sunday. So we didn't have anything in for Bloody Sunday, but my uncle went back to school that day. But on the Wednesday, the day off work for Derry. Uh, and this one here are from 1963. Uh, and we have on the 26th, Wednesday the 26th of June, we have uh, Kennedy arrives. So here, this is one is from 1963. Uh, and if you go to June, you know, on the 26th of June, which is a Wednesday, 1963, we have Kennedy arrives, which is JFK. Hi, my name is Hannah, and this is my small business, Woman in Wool. What I do is I create custom crochet, and I dive into Irish culture, history, and folklore. What opened the door to heritage for me was actually moving to Ireland in 2016. I am originally from New York and Miami, and when I moved here, it was almost like a wash of history coming over me all at once. The oldest building in New York is from 1652, and then jumping into Ireland, you know, you have places like Noth and Newgrange and even the Brazen Head pub down in Dublin. And this was all on my doorstep. I moved in with a trad-centered family, a family of musicians and artists, and they really made it a point to teach me about Irish culture in a holistic sense. They were passionate about Irish culture, they spoke Irish, and they really wanted me to understand in a, in a broad sense about what Ireland is and who it is. And from there on, I couldn't get enough. The family I lived with made it a point to take me to huge heritage sites, uh, flaws, and traditional music sessions. 
And I could tell that they really wanted to give me Ireland. And for that, I am so thankful. I couldn't imagine doing it any other way. A story which sticks with me that they told me, I mean, there are so many, um, you know, there, there are hundreds of stories you could tell about Ireland. But the one that really kind of spoke to me was we went to the Giant's Causeway. And this was the first time that I had ever really gone to a huge heritage site or a big tourist you know, destination in Ireland. And it's breathtaking. It's absolutely amazing. I've never seen anything like Giant's Causeway. Um, and, you know, Giant's Causeway has these huge rock formations on the tip of Ireland. And then also it was a land bridge over into Scotland as well. So they have very similar kind of looks in Ireland and in Scotland. And so they told me the story of Finn McCool and how he was the giant over in Ireland and he was meant to fight the Scottish giant at one point. So he crossed the land bridge to see kind of who he was going to be fighting and how big he was going to be and realized he was way in over his head and that the Scottish giant was actually too big for him to fight. Um, so upon coming home, he tells his wife that, you know, the giant is going to be too big for him to fight. He can't fight it. Um, so his wife suggests an idea and she wraps him up like a baby. She swaddles him and puts him on the very foot of the Scottish or the Irish side of the land bridge. And so the Scottish giant comes over, comes to see Finn McCool, sees that there's this giant baby. He says, oh my gosh, if that's his baby, then I wonder how big he's going to be. The Scottish giant runs away from the potential fight, crashes the land bridge, and that's how we got the Giant's Causeway today. So that's kind of a story that always sticks with me because it loops in modern day Ireland and the old folklore um, that Ireland is so famous, famous for. So um, check me out on Instagram. My name is at woman.in.wolf, so woman and wool. Um, and you can check out my blog from there as well. Thanks, guys. Hi, my name is Trudy and I'm a genealogist and tour guide and for me it all started here at the Rock of Dunamays in County Leash. It's the stories that fascinate me about places like this around Ireland and here the stories go back as far as 120 AD among the first maps of Ireland by the Greek cartographer Ptolemy. Hello, I'm Janet Cavanagh. I run Ewhiz Electric Bike Tours in Kilfenora in County Clare. Kilfenora is probably best known as the home of the world's oldest Cayley band, the Kilfenora Cayley band, more than 100 years old. Some people also know that it's one of the locations from the iconic Father Ted TV series. But what many people don't realise is that Kilfenora is the only place outside of Rome where the Pope is the Bishop. So how did that happen? Well, back in the 6th century, St. Facklin founded a monastery here in Kilfenora. By 1152, Rome had appointed a bishop. There were then a succession of bishops and the final bishop of Kilfenora died in 1749. After he died, there was no, no other bishop appointed, but the diocese was put under the administration of the Bishop of Galway. So by default, the Pope remains the Bishop of Kilfenora. Now we have invited him to come and visit us here and we're looking forward to seeing him sometime in the near future. But in the meantime, we'd love to see you visiting us here. Come here to see our high crosses from the 12th century. One of them is behind me here, the West Cross. There's also a number of other crosses here in the village to be seen. And the surrounding area, of course, we are on the edge of the Burren. There's fantastic amenities, fantastic history, archaeology, geolo geology, flora, everything here in the Burren. So do come and visit us sometime very soon. We are a centre of Irish heritage. Hi folks, my name's Donald Kelly. I operate Belfast Mike Tours and I offer guided walking, cycle and step on guiding here in Belfast and other parts of Northern Ireland. But I started working for Shorts Bombardier Aerospace back in the mid 1980s. I would have been driving around here in my wee green mini metro and I'd heard stories that Titanic was built somewhere around here but I didn't actually know where and I didn't know anything really about that. So I started to look into it a little bit. But then I started working back in 2012 for Titanic Belfast in this big silver building you see behind me here. 
And obviously I started to learn a lot more and started to talk to people from all around the world and started to get a real interest and fascination with this fantastic story of the, the maritime heritage and all the beautiful built heritage that we have here along this maritime mile, the headquarters that you see behind me here of Harland and Wolf. And it is fantastic and it is a world-class off offering as well. Hello, it's Misha Mary Beth Taylor, August is Muncherinko Gwelgame, it's Asmerica May, a Tame Mahoney, a Malia Aklia Anish. Uh, my name is Mary Beth Taylor. I am an Irish dancing teacher. I'm originally from the US, but I live in Dublin now. I am the director of Irish Dance Dublin, and I teach Irish dancing and shannos, or old style dancing, to adults. Um, I also teach social dancing to university and corporate groups, and I am currently working on developing a dance fitness program. Um, it was my mom, Margaret Philomena, who opened the door to heritage for me. Um, my mother was from Galway, and she actually joined the convent at a pre pretty young age. So her, um, definitely her teenhood and young adulthood were very different to mine. And uh, she had lots of positive things to say about her time in the convent. But one thing my mom was really passionate about was that my brother and I got to do any any extracurricular activity that we ever wanted to do because that was something that she never had the opportunity to do. So um, I always loved dancing. Ever since I was really little, I did ballet and tap and jazz and modern. And uh, my mom always wanted me to do Irish dancing. But at the time we were living in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and there wasn't a lot of Irish dancing there back then. So um, eventually my dad got transferred to Georgia, uh, to Marietta, which is outside of Atlanta. And it was then that I saw Irish dancing being performed in person for the first time. And it was at a St. Patrick's Day party at our church. Um, the group was the Mulligan School of Irish Dance in Marietta, and I remember watching these dancers and I just knew that I would do this for the rest of my life, and uh, so far that has proven to be true. Unfortunately, my mom uh, developed early onset dementia, which later turned into Alzheimer's uh, when she was still a relatively young woman. Um, so. She suffered for many years and she passed away in September 2019, but even towards the end, uh, listening to Irish music seemed to bring her a sense of peace and happiness. So I'm going to do a few dancing steps for you now, uh, for you all and for my mom for bringing it all together. So go Ramila Mahagif. 